Hey there, it's Adrian over at The Samplist, and today we are checking out Pathfinder Violin from Osterhaus Sounds. Pathfinder Violin is a rhythmic legato library, whereby you play a chord on your MIDI controller and it will turn it into a phrase based on the notes of that chord. This is great for creating phrases and ostinatos without doing all the programming. You can guarantee that this library will sound authentic as Ben Osterhaus, the developer of this library, is also a string player. Pathfinder Violin weighs in at just 2.6 gig, contains just over 9,000 samples and is compatible with both the full version of Contact and the free Contact player. You will need at least 8 gig of memory as the library is quite CPU and memory intensive. The library is currently priced at $89. This is no ordinary sample library, no sorry. Uh, there's opportunity to create some interesting melodic textures and lines. So, Let's hear what this library sounds like as we take a little talk through some of the patches.
So that's what Pathfinder Violin sounds like. So I'm, what I'm going to do is take a look at the interface now, but I'm not going to go in great detail because Ben has done a great video on his website demonstrating how you can design your own melodics, textures and sounds, etc. Uh, this is just going to be a quick overview as to what you're actually looking at. And I've got to say, the, the interface itself does take me back to my childhood. It reminds me of that classic game Pipe Dream, where you connect pipes to let the water flow around the maze. And you'll understand what I mean in a minute when I, when we start looking at this interface. Um, basically, on the left-hand side here, you've got like little brief, semi brief notes. This represents what happens as to how many notes you press. So if I press one note, it will play an E and it'll play in octaves. It'll play an E3 and an E4. Now if I play a C minor chord, you'll see it comes up with three notes and it'll oscillate between the C, the E flat and the G. C to the G to the E flat. If you follow that line, that's the notes it will play. So if I play a four note chord, so for those old enough among us to remember that game, Pipe Dream, you'll understand what I mean. The water, see that white little white thing, it's like the water flowing through the pipe. You get an idea of the direction of the actual uh, sort of melody is going to happen here. To play the melody, you have to use the blue shaded part of the keyboard. This is the normal range for a violin, so it makes sense that those are the notes that you can only play. Now these wonderful little coloured notes down here, those are your key switches. And the link to bits up here, that says melody 1, melody 2, 3, uh, arc up, triplet arc down. Now, if I want to play a note, a uh, note, a chord, so I'm playing melody with C minor, I can now use a key switch to keep hold of that same chord and then play a different melody. So you can set the interface up to actually play sort of different parts of a melody and key switch between the two, which is a really cool thing to do. And down here we have the release tail of the envelope and the reverb. Now, I must sort of point out that all these samples were recorded at 120 beats per minute and it uses the Contax Time Machine Pro as a time stretch sample to the tempo of your project. So this may have an undesired effect on the sample playback and you this is what this tempo sync slider does. It sort of helps get rid of that undesired effect. So for example, if your project is at 60 beat, beats per minute, you may want to change this slider to two times so it gets more in sync. Uh, because if you think 60 times 2 is 120, it gets the sort of sample back to where it actually started, 120 beats per minute. That's what that tempo sync slider does. Um, what you can do also is if you click on this little pencil icon, this is where the magic happens. This allows you to design your own pathways in the interface. And this is what Ben's video does on his website. It goes into great detail as to how it actually all comes together. But basically, it's like a little jigsaw thing. If you just say, I want that to appear there, it will go from that um, note. So if I play a chord. And it'll play what I just put in there. You've got to be careful which line you put it on because if you put it on this one that's got five notes and I play only three, it's not going to trigger that particular path. Uh, so you can have great fun in designing your own little melodies, etc., based on how many notes you're actually playing on the chord on the controller. Uh, you can also alter the length. So if I don't only want it to repeat after playing short section it will come back 
you can fade it in and trim. That's what that does there. It's a very simple interface, but there is an awful lot you can actually do with it. Um, you can pan different paths. So if I select uh, this path here, I can pan that path. Say, let's go crazy to the right there. Sorry, I just need to lengthen this, otherwise it won't work. Uh, let's go to that one. And then this path here, I want to pan to the right. And now listen, listen, listen to what happens. You get part of it on the left, and then it pans to the right. So you can actually get some very strange stereophonic sort of patterns emerging. Um, that that's the interface in a very very sort of brief nutshell. Very simple but very complex in what you can actually do with it. So let's sort of take this into a composition environment and let's hear it in in that particular mold. Okay, so that's what it sounds like in a composition context just using this library. Now, that track's not going to win any Emmy Awards, granted, but it was just there to sort of like give you an idea of how quickly you could actually put like something together that is like a nucleus for a track. Because it's going to be dead easy to actually expand that using other instruments. Let's just have a quick look what's actually going on in this library and let's just solo the sustains here so what's going on here so if i play this one plane here is just chords and this particular patch allows you to play nice long sustained legato violins that's basically that track and all i've done is automated the volume now handily this is already pre-mapped to the mod wheel, so you can actually use your mod wheel to adjust the volume as you go along, which is a very, very handy thing to do. Um, next, we have the slow oscillating violins going on here. Now, what happens when these come in? You have this sound. Now, for a couple of us with sustains, we get this wonderful lamenting effect. And as we go further on, we crescendo into it. That's what's happening on those two lines there. Now, this I find very interesting in the in the library. It's this melody section. So if I just start playing this. That plays. Because I'm playing with the key switches here, 
as I go along. So I'm going to flick to melody two, and then the next chord I'll flick to melody three. So it's a great way of sort of getting variation in just one sort of patch here, which is which is really really good. Um, then we have this wonderful crisscross texture that's going on. So I'll just bring that up. Now this is giving I need to sort of like the the lamentation the effect that I was actually after. Here. Let's go. Oh, oh. Gives like a, this lamenting yearning effect. And now if I couple that with the sustains that are going on at the same time, solo them out. And then a match it with a slow oscillating. Now to add a little bit of sort of interest, we put some Alberti triplets in part way through. So I'll just solo those out and bring that interface up. I'll solo the Alberti triplets. Again, we're going to have a key width switching going on. We've got three different types of Alberti going on and then the fourth just to change it, just invert, do the inversion. So when I couple that with the other parts that are playing at that time, we have this. We just take a look at the very last one, which is the dense arc. Now, what's happening here? I just need to solo that. I need to be the I just need to press that. There we go. Uh, line that up at the beginning of the bar. I do like this echoey effect. And then when it added to the part, it just adds to it. All we need to do now, well, add a bit of brass, some nice drums, and you've got the makings of a track there. That took me, didn't take very long to put this together. I think it was about half hour or so to put all that together, with the thanks to this library. Um, absolutely fantastic. So my thoughts on this library. You have violin sample libraries and then you have those that take things in a new and interesting direction. This library falls in the new and interesting category and it does it in spades. You can interact with the interface to create cool melodic lines by just playing chords, just simple chords. The interface looks complex but it is quite intuitive once you get going and it is really logically laid out, so that's off to Ben on that one. Pathfinder Violin offers an interesting and quick way to create complex violin phrases, whether they be melodic in nature or purely textual. You can hear from the patch playthrough and the composition that these samples have been carefully curated by an expert string player. I am looking forward to delving into this library further in some of my own compositions. You can take that as, I really do like this library, and if you are a media composer or looking for some unique ways to incorporate violins into your project, then this is the library for you. I would like to thank Oster House for sending across Pathfinder Violin for review, and it is very much appreciated. So, I hope you enjoy this video, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel and visit thesamplist.com to see what we're all about. On to the next.